a very good evening to all of you and i warmly welcome our ladies and gentlemen to the research week 2022 another panel discussion will be starting today so before starting the panel discussion for today's lineup uh, i would like to remind so yesterday we had a very good a fruitful discussion on how to become an effective researcher so i guess this discussion will be another extension of yesterday's work so today we are going to discuss on how we need to do research differently at the university to bring a wider socio economic impact to sri lanka so uh, to start the panel discussion i would like to introduce dr venura velagidara who is a senior lecturer at department of industrial management in faculty of business university of morotua so who is the moderator of our today's panel discussion sir i would like to invite you to start the proceeding thank you ladies and gentlemen uh, we are here to talk about how we can conduct research um, in a way that has a strong socio economic impact when you look at the word research um it, do you know that it comes from a french word which means to search for knowledge or to search for truth so um this search for knowledge in the past has given us many benefits whatever devices we use the clothes we wear the food we eat whatever it is is a result of somebody being curious at some point and searching for more knowledge ultimately leading to uh, an outcome so today we hope to discuss as a university as an academic how can we conduct research which has a wholesome impact on the society for that we have invited a number of eminent panelists uh, from different fields so some of them are academics some of them are practitioners uh, all of them are leaders in their respective fields so i'm pretty sure we will have a very engaging and interesting conversation today and that we will learn a lot when we walk out of this room uh, so the first session will be organized in such a way that we will have um, uh, the set of speakers coming here and sharing their thoughts about this particular topic and then we move on to the second session where we will have a panel discussion where we will discuss things in more depth so without further ado let me introduce our first speaker for the day he is the founding dean of the faculty of medicine at the university of morotua he has served as a, as a senior professor and head of department of surgery at the university of kalania and a consultant surgeon in the north colombo teaching hospital uh, the professor has over 29 years of experience in medical education having worked in faculties of medicine in ruhuna and kalania uh he completed his post graduate education in the united kingdom and sri lanka he has delivered five orations three memorial memorial lectures and made more than 80 invited lectures in various occasions he has received six international and 12 national research awards he has served as a member of the editorial boards of world journal of endocrine surgery ceylon medical journal and the journal of surgery let me warmly invite professor ranil fernando to share your thoughts you can come here after you sir good evening everybody can hear me i never used the microphone so i don't think i'll use one right okay so for live streaming apparently we need a mic so let's go on so I, i don't want this to be a very formal thing 
Uh, but um, just to uh, get the get the ball rolling, I thought I'll introduce some, I'll put some slides and throw some ideas out to you so that you can uh, think about things and then maybe during the question session and discussion, it will lead to a fruitful discussion. So the topic is uh, research with a socioeconomic impact. Research. I think Venura has already told you how the what the derivative word is. But for me, it is to look again. So in terms of medicine, we are looking again for better ways of managing illness, provision of health, and cost-effective ways. I think that's a very important thing that we must remember, particularly in terms of socioeconomic impact, that we must, whatever we do must be cost-effective. And also, in keeping with time, we need to incorporate technology and modern advances when we are managing, particularly in medicine. So the main purpose of socioeconomic impact, now that's probably the most important thing, is to prove to society that research brings benefit to the entire society and that they are relevant goes far beyond pure science. Now doing pure science, that's why it's not called an experiment. Experiment may be pure science, but when you say research, we are looking again for answers, like when we try to set. So therefore, we need to have this in mind. And uh, people understand, I think everybody, not only in this room, but in the wider society, people understand that research can offer benefits and affect their lives, improve national economies, address important issues. Uh, in terms of medicine, sometimes this is not so obvious. Good health, obviously is necessary to maintain the economy and so on, but the direct impact of it may not be so obvious, but then we need to make it a bit more obvious, and I think that would make a difference. But also, we must be able to justify the investment of public funds uh, when deciding how to allocate. See, most of the time, one of the, one of the problems that we encounter, particularly in medicine, is underfunding. In fact, I was trying to do a island-wide research on, on goiters, and then I was asking for ultrasound scans, Suddenly, one million was lost, and I couldn't get the ultrasound scan. So, it, uh, because of that, the research suffered. But if we should be able to justify what we are doing and show everybody that it is worthwhile doing it. I think then it will make a difference. And the process must be transparent and open. One of the other little allegations that always happens is that money is misused, and it's not used for the purpose that is intended. So, therefore, we need to be transparent. And the assessment of the social impact. Now that is a very difficult thing, particularly in medicine, because you need to collect a lot of information. And this is not given enough attention. I think that is one of the reasons why um, some of the research that we do may not be recognized by people. And also, I think being scientists, we don't tend to give it publicity. Particularly in medicine, we will publish it in a medical journal and we'll note the impact factor, etc. But the socioeconomic impact, I don't think we address this issue enough. I don't know how to overcome this particular medicine because we are not supposed to advertise. But I think we need to find a link. We need to find an agency which can give project what we do for the betterment of society, and that we'll do. And of course, you need a lot of data. And uh, impact can only be obtained after studying it very carefully, surveys, interviews, case studies, and so on. So there's a lot of work to be done in terms of research and making um, you, people get the social impact. And uh, I think this is one area, particularly at Moratio, that we can do very well, big collaboration. In fact, I'm very happy that uh, as the first faculty in Sri Lanka, we have a medical technology stream going and where the engineers are doing the teaching. So if we can collaborate these two arms, that will be a great opportunity for us to undertake some very important uh, um, uh, research projects with a lot of socioeconomic impact. So uh, I hope that in future, with the new doctors coming out of Moratua and also the new engineers coming out of Moratua, we can do some collaborative projects which will probably have a much better impact on society than what we are experiencing now. I'm not entirely sure that we have evidence to say that the uh, 
research that we under, undertake has no socioeconomic impact, what I think is it has not been assessed. So perhaps we need to pay more attention to uh, looking at these things. So I think that's about all I want to say. So apart from wishing everybody good luck in your research, you see one of the things we always say is this is our country. But if we don't liberate this country and if we don't lift it up, there's nobody else to do the job. So good luck to all of you and thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for that uh, interesting uh, speech. Um, our next speaker uh, is Dr. Mudita Senratyapa, who is a practitioner as well as an academic, uh, in my own opinion. Uh, so he, he has completed his PhD in analytical chemistry from the University of Arizona. And afterwards, he has completed postdoctoral work at uh, Carnegie Mellon University. He has also been a senior scientist at the Sri Lanka Institute of Nanotechnology. Um, in 2012, uh, Dr. Yapa was hired uh, to uh, head the research arm of John Keels Holdings, uh, which was John Keels Research. And he completed setting up John Keels Research um, to use science and technology to develop knowledge for future technologies. So uh, for th uh, with that introduction, I would like to warmly welcome Dr. Mudita Senrat Yapa. Hello. Um, thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, the problem uh, of uh, talking after uh, eminent professor, he already said most of the things I wanted to say also. <laughs> I uh, also focus on the word research and the socioeconomic impact uh, here. So, so uh, so why do people do research? Uh, these are some of the reasons. Most of the time in universities, uh, lecturers uh, target publications uh, which are necessary for their job-related uh, uh, promotions and things like that. In the teaching side, uh, some of them are undergraduate projects. There are internships. Sometimes it's uh, in, within universities or outside places. There are industrial problem solving here and there sometimes comes towards universities. Uh, entrepreneurships, actually some of the people I know in this uh, audience also uh, uh, have done some uh, similar research. Then uh, sometimes, very rarely in Sri Lanka, technology development and tech transfer happens. And sometimes, uh, actually all the times, I think uh, most of the scientists uh, if you really think about the science side, they do research uh, purely curiosity-based. Uh, so socio-economic impact. So are universities making any socio-economic impact? In my opinion, it does. Only thing is, um, we are looking at um, the, uh, the degree holders, right? Uh, degrees, and because of degree, they get better jobs. If, if you think about a situation where the universities are not there, what will happen, right? So there is already a socio-economic impact, uh, which is happening. But have we quantified it? We haven't. So because of that, everybody can point fingers to universities, not this university, all the universities, uh, saying that most of the time these are coming from politicians. Uh, saying universities are not working. Even recently I heard uh, the president saying that uh, we have to modi modernize the university degrees to bring uh, people from outside the country. But education is a totally different thing that I don't think none of these politicians really understand. I'm sorry I'm uh, uh, <laughs> talking about politicians, but. Uh, so I saw this uh, on uh, this website. So what is opposite of quantified? Maybe ignore in this case. So whatever the uh, socio-economic impact made by universities are ignored by the society. And it's easier to uh, criticize, but look at how universities work with very little resources given to them. 
I, I don't think anybody will uh, look at that side. Yes, we don't get the whole benefit of that social economic impact. Some of them actually leave the country, and I understand them too. Uh, everybody is working towards a better life, so they sometimes think greener pastures are overseas. Uh, that is a personal decision. And sometimes people go and come back, and sometimes people go and stay. So that's, those are all personal decisions, and people, are, people should be allowed to make those decisions. But if we are investing some money, some public money, uh, to educate people, we should find a way to capture that full value. So the other thing is socioeconomic impact cannot be made by one institute. If you are expecting universities to make this whole impact, I don't think it's going to work. So if you look at the businesses have, has to move with the technology. They need to uh, create jobs which are requiring these new technologies, new things which are developed at universities. General public also has to have some acceptance of new technologies. How many uh, different uh, things are criticized by even even today in the parliament I was before uh, coming here I was listening to them uh, they were talking about this um, cannabis issue they are talking like that uh, the government is going to allow cannabis to be uh, uh, for smoking that's not what's going to happen if it happens Medical uh, cannabis is a whole different field. And I think the major researcher or the major investor in this area is country Israel. So uh, I know uh, there are different cases, if you look at it uh, in, in USA as well as Thailand, they, are, they have allowed people to smoke also. But the whole point is, without looking at the real details of the issue, we are talking about that um, we are criticizing something without really getting all the details. Even people who are making the laws are unaware of what, what's going to happen. Then the entrepreneurs also want, want to have new technologies. So the uh, development or new research input can come from the universities to them. Investors as well as government policy. So the biggest uh, thing I will uh, suggest you uh, some uh, reading if you have some time. Go to UGC website and re read the UGC Act. It's fun, <laughs> right? Uh, for, uh, for a new university to uh, start in the country, that has to come from the minister. Look at how many higher education ministers, whatever the uh, edu higher education ministers we had in the past, how many of them do you think have a vision to start a new university. They will probably work under somebody's advice, but the whole point is, why is that, uh, that responsibility is with the minister? And uh, according to UGC Act, I don't think the universities have a lot of freedom. Universities are set up as education institutes. So there is no research uh, focus given in them. I think whole university community should fight for a, uh, modernizing the University Act and for more freedom. The last thing is equitable behavior from all these uh, sectors, right? We don't have to go into details, but how, uh, I don't think, uh, I think we deserve the state we are in uh, as a country because money spent on even in research, as the professor mentioned, transparency may be an issue, but even in research, do they go into the right places? Are they uh, doing the right things? So that behavior has to be there from all the uh, sections of the society, including the universities as well as general public, uh, for us to uh, capture the social economic impact. I think, uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much.
thank you very much, Dr. Mujitra, for that very interesting and thought-provoking, uh, I would say, uh, talk. Uh, our next speaker, ladies and gentlemen, um, is somebody probably all of you know very well. Um, she's a senior lecturer at the Department of Computer Science and Engineering uh, since 1994. And she has been head of department as well as the director of Center for Open and Distance Learning at the University of Muratua. Uh, her research interests lie in performance modeling and analytics and the applications of them in real life, technology-based teaching, learning and assessments in education, uh, e-learning and the application of it in, uh, on developing economies. She has been instrumental uh, in uh, trying to uh, take uh, IT education to the masses with the uh, open.uom.lk platform. And she has also set up the data search um, uh, multidisciplinary research unit as well. And she recently uh, was recognized for these efforts uh, with an award uh, for the, uh, let me get the exact name right, ICT Educator of the Year. Uh, last year, awarded by the Computer Society of Sri Lanka. So I warmly welcome Mrs. Vishaka Nanyakar. Thank you, Venera, for the very descriptive introduction. But I know you all know me. Uh, I am not going to compete with the people trying to define what research is. But I thought I'll talk about what I know better, the university, how we at Moratua can make uh, socially and economically impactful contributions through our research. It's uh, we, being a technical university, yet the technologies that we use are somewhat different. But we all have one thing in common. We are being exposed to the world's latest technologies, either through our postgraduate studies, the frequent attendance that we do at conferences, the research journals, everything. The technology is at our fingertips, no matter which discipline that we come from. And we also know that the expected outcomes probably would be different. The, whenever Surangika or myself go to various places, they just want to know how their computer can do something better. Or when we see someone else, we, we have different expectations. But Everyone has belief that we can come up with a solution to a problem that they have. That's a luxury that we enjoy. And that's a reputation we have built up over the years. So if you look at, though there is diversity in what we do, the disciplines we come, we, all of us have the capabilities and the recognition that is needed to make an impactful difference in the society. And uh, if you look at then, once when you try and understand the socio-economical differences, of course, uh, the, so the social part of it, if you leave aside, we need to make sure that so what we do has an impact on the society. And what we do has an impact on the economy. Can we do that? I'm, I'm not going to, uh, I mean, like, you can define it in multiple ways, right? Is it being a world leader in a given area or a given technology? Like the way our colleagues like Dr. Ajit Pascal has done, you start a niche, you start a niche area and try to do it. Is it that? If you look at that, that as being a trendsetter, being a world leader in doing research in areas, coming up with innovations, we have done that. Muratua has enough and more examples which we can quote. I'll just take one example from the field that I come from, or two maybe. You, we all know of Apache Software Foundation. That is where most of the software we use are coming from ASF, the Apache Software Foundation. It was with greatest pride we used to say, outside of USA, the la highest number of Apache committers are from Sri Lanka. These are free and open source software where people build software, not just use. And the people who build this software are from us. 
I mean, some names to rem Apache Sandesh is the communication module that is being used, which is developed here. We, we had Axis, Axis Mora, all these. So we, we can be a world leader. The other example that came to my mind is the travel box, which is done by a local company, a company which is no stranger to Moratua because they have sponsored a lab there. The, uh, so, so if you think f Facebook has had an economic impact in some economy, similarly, we have had products which are world-leading products. And Moratua had always been part and parcel of that. On the other hand, if you think about no, this is not what the social eco social economic impact is. We need to develop things that people use that would make a difference in day-to-day -day lives of the people. I was just thinking about it last night, and I recollected, as a young lecturer, I remember one of my students uh, wanted his third year software engineering project, uh, an individual project, to be submitted for an international award, Mananthan Award, which was uh, where he, he won the award, was for a language translator. Today, the brain behind Basha Lanka, the Helakuru, the Sinhala uh, fonts that you use, Danika Kaushalya Pereira was that student. And Danika Basha Lanka is just one example, but if you look at the impact that it has had on this normal society, that, that there's tremendous lot. Today, if you look at companies like PickMe, which is competing with Uber, they need a lot of research, tremendous lot of research that need to go into make sure that they are competitive. The, like multiple other interdisciplinary research centers, data search is one of their make major research arms. And I think one thing that Moritua did right and my tribute to uh, founded in uh, Faculty of Graduate Studies and to the then Vice Chancellor was coming up with these interdisciplinary research centers. And we do have collaborative arms working for everything. When we named research centers, one of them was named NLP in the field I represent. This is natural language processing is a huge thing, but our research center is national language. So we look at how we can, our research can contribute to the national languages. So there are, if you look at it, the impact that we can have is coming from multiple Disciplines. I'm sorry, I, I talk about what I know of, but each and every one of you have a story to tell. Unfortunately, as uh, Professor Anil said, perhaps sometimes we don't know how to tell these stories. We don't know how to go to the people with these stories, but there would be an opportunity. Couple of years, or maybe like six months ago, if you talked about QR codes, people would have wondered what it is, right? But today, every Sri Lankan is an expert on QR code. Because that was uh, when Murita was uh, showing that uh, hexagons, uh, I was thinking, the, the, there need to be a dying need, right? I mean, if not for the problem of world, if we try to rush, do this, it would not have been successful. But there was a need, there was the correct leadership, the political leadership, what, whatever it is, the minister stood up for the challenge and said, we need to do that. And very, it's, it's, it's no new innovation. Ajit would say that's not research, that's not innovation. That's, that was an existing technology applied to solving a problem that was there. So my thinking is, we need to identify the problems which are there, identify a local problem. I, I'll just tell you one other story. One of the problems Sri Lanka has is by about March, there won't be any rice in the market. So, uh, and by about February, and by, by, because you need rice, then people try to make sure that we import rice. 
not knowing what the next harvest would be. So this was an ongoing problem and which was presented to us. We thought, can't we do something? Today, you get satellite images available at fingertips. You get various machine learning mechanisms which can use to read these data and make predictions. So one of the recent research we did at the department was predicting paddy harvest from the time that you cultivate paddy. And we could do that for a 94% accuracy. Of course, as he said, people don't want to buy that, right? They would still, politicians would still try to create a problem, import some rice in February, but by the time the paddy is harvested in March, end of March, April, there would be a surplus. So there is always a problem. But technology can solve these problems. So my appeal to all my colleagues is, we have the technology, we are the experts in that, we know what is happening out there, Le and we know the local problems. So let's try to apply that uh, our knowledge, the opportunity we have, and solve problems which would have a huge socioeconomic impact for Sri Lanka. Thank you. Thank you, madam. It is indeed a pleasure always listening to you. Uh, let me welcome the next speaker. Uh, he is an experienced and passionate business leader, scientist, innovator, with over 12 years of uh, experience in scientific research. He holds four patent applications and has authored 40 journal articles. Uh, he is focused on developing innovative solutions with, for industry applications. Uh, his expertise lie in the area of health, and bit, health wellness, and fitness. <coughs> for his efforts, he has been recognized by the industry and academia both, and recently he won the most outstanding leadership award in the year of 2022. Uh, let me welcome Dr. Angelo Karnaratna uh, to share his thoughts. Thank you very much uh, for that introduction. And um, so what I would like to do is to give a bit of a uh, description about how universities can do research differently um, to get some little bit from uh, industry, basically. Um, Ms. Vishak has explained quite a lot about the impact that university is doing currently. Uh, nevertheless, we can do more impact. So how we can learn some, uh, learn, get some learnings from industry, how we can apply those uh, modalities and industrial miles, mindset in the university to increase that impact furthermore. So I will uh, start with a small video and uh, then I'll move into the key topics that I want to cover. The future of health and wellness. What you see is only beginning to scratch the surface of what we do. I'll be right back, Dennis. Introducing WaveTech, the future of an improved... Ah, hello there. It's nice to have you at such short notice. Welcome to the future of health and wellness. What you see is only beginning to scratch the surface of what we do. I'll be right back, Dennis. Introducing WaveTech, the future of an improved, rejuvenated quality of life. Thank you. Meet our visionary team of academics, doctors, scientists, engineers, and plain old brilliant people who are pushing the boundaries of modern science and circulation. Now, we don't just collaborate with brilliant minds, we provide services to brilliant minds. Through a multidisciplinary approach, we are creating purposefully designed human-centric solutions unlike anything the world has ever seen. So, don't tell anyone to let you in. Now, we're more than just a collective entourage of professionals leveraging our expertise to bring you world-class, cost-effective apparel. We are a part of MAS. 
one of South Asia's largest textile and apparel manufacturers, with decades of experience in pioneering next-to-skin solutions. Behold, our 50 manufacturing, design, and operation centers. Wow, now that is a lot of math. We have even developed an innovation that you might have already heard of, spring. With a unique compression profile, our patent-pending design is taking sport recovery to a whole new level an on-the-go solution to swelling and inflammation, using compression technology to ensure comfort, rejuvenation, and clinically proven results. Your friendly second skin apparel solution for athletes, entrepreneurs, and people the world over. Spring is completely untethered, a masterpiece. Simply put, we made it our goal to change your world one product at a time. With intelligent compression technology and thermal regulation, we can bring virtually any item of clothing to life all to ensure that your business has a range of solutions that can revitalize human life, ensuring fast recovery, improved circulation, all according to your requirements. Hey, Dennis, looking good. So, uh, what I won't do, get out from that video is that at the industry, how academics, researchers, scientists, doctors come together and come up with a solution that is uh, proven or backed by research. So that's also done. A lot of research, researchers come together and identify a solution and then with the, the final goal of taking to market or commercialization. Here, thank you to um, focus on the first quadrant of the uh, slide. So industry research versus university research, where we do the ideation, scope, discover, validate, and launch. So I think in the university research also, we do we identify a problem. It can be a basic scientific problem, it can be a trans translational problem, or it can be a even commercialization, some market research, after some market research, you identify that problem, and then you develop that solution. But that develop the solution, you might stop somewhere at the validate after discover phase. It's very rarely you are taking that solution to a launch phase. So I think that's somewhat what we do in the industry is different because we have a common goal that goal that um, into the market. Then how we kind of get to that within industry, within uh, in the university setup. So we need to create that startup culture. That's one way of creating that solution into a commercialized product. So if we can get students to understand the startup culture, that way eventually it will create the venture capitalists to fund. Um, and so that way we can bring that research into a much more uh, commercialization and bringing the socioeconomic uh, impact. And then I was talking to uh, Professor Rani about this creating an industrial mindset. So when it, when it comes to industrial mindset in the universities, um, any product or any solution that we develop, we need to always look at what is the cost of developing that product or to the solution how it's kind of uh, changes with the current market price. So I have been to multiple uh, thesis presentations with cities. One of the question that I always ask from students, when they present their prototype, how much do you think it will cost for you to make this product? What is your selling price? How are you going to sustain your business? So that market uh, commercialization knowledge or the 
creating that startup, sustain that business, how do you scale that business, that mindset we need to kind of plant in our undergraduates. That's very important when it comes to taking that research into the different level. Then fourthly, if we kind of get, if we increase the impact to the society and to the global setting, what sort of impact that we are bringing back to the university? That's also we need to think about. So the financial benefits, funds, sponsorships, the recognition, of course, as Vishaka talked about the recognition. Uh, so that recognition can be global. Uh, the publication patterns, then also higher rankings. So when I come to higher rankings, when I come to these, talk about these benefits to the university, I would like you to con now concentrate on the middle part of it. One of the university in Europe has achieved these things. So there are patents, number of patents filed 305. 40% of them got successful. And also the commercial impact score. It's not just the social impact. So they are looking at the commercial impact score is 43.3. So that's how we should kind of look at our university systems, how we rank them. That way, we, we also, as university lecturers and scientists and researchers, we also have a goal. It's not about getting a publication out or a patent out, it will be giving that commercial and social impact to the society. So with that, thank you very much. Um, I'll hand over to the next. Angelo, that was indeed quite interesting to listen it from the uh, industry's perspective. Uh, our next speaker uh, is an academic. Uh, and a material researcher with varied experience in public and private sectors. Uh, his role as an academic includes his current role uh, in the Institute of Technology, University of Muratua as a senior lecturer. Um, he is also an engaged material researcher specialized in nanotechnology as well as advanced materials. Um, he also shares his uh, ideas in philosophy, science, mathematics, etc using his uh, YouTube channel. So in the sense, he uh, attempts a lot to share the knowledge with the wider public um, and, and to disseminate knowledge in a meaningful way. Uh, so let me welcome Dr. Ruchira Vijay Sena. The work he, 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 I mean, he does, of course, but his intention is to get it done with the, uh, the quickest way with the least amount of effort. But of course, the plumber type B also gets the job done, of course, but he has something more to offer. And this, the, uh, of course, this can be extended to the many, many different fields. We have teachers, A and B, different types. Teacher A is concerned about making a student ready for a particular exam. So he will pass. And of course, teacher B, we have, he is looking at something else. He's looking at a, making an aspiring student, something a little bit different to offer. The list goes on. We have doctors who's concerned about you know, giving certain pills to certain uh, illnesses. And we have doctors uh, concerned about the health of an individual. And of course, we can extend this even further. We have citizens, A and B. Citizen A's are particularly interested in what they gain. <laughs> and of course, we have citizen B's, they look the overall picture. They are concerned about setting up a society and progressing the society as a whole. 
something else. Dear ladies and gentlemen, today's my discussion is primarily about what distinguish people A from people B. Of course, we understand something that there's no exact A and exact B. There's always a spectrum. And this brings to the, uh, this interesting curve. Dr. Mudita would uh, give a better talk on this. This is the Boltzmann curve. You see, in a chemical system, for a chemical reaction to occur, you of course have all the reactants. In a, in a match, you have a, a compound that can catch fire, of course, and there's a lot of oxygen in the room. But still, the match, it, match wouldn't really catch fire until the system reach a certain level of critical energy. We have everything. We have all the potential. But still, the magic, the fireworks wouldn't happen. Why? We need to have, in a system, higher energy species for the magic to happen. This is, of course, chemistry. But I think in many ways, this can be extended to larger society as well. We need, my dear audience, a lot of B type. So we in our country, this is at least the way I see it. Some may uh, not agree with me. We have a lot of potential, a lot of opportunities. But still, the magic, we are still expecting. I think we need a lot of bees in our society. So today's discussion is about how we make them. There are three things that separates A from B, three things. You see, the, the type bees can look at two things particularly. They can see the big picture about doing something. And they also can manage situation. And there's something called flair. Let me elaborate. You see, let's look at what our two plumbers have done, the type A and type B. You see, the type A gets something done, of course. But he hasn't seen the big picture. You see, plumbing is not about having some you know, water flowing in a certain direction. There's something more. There's something more to see. There's a much bigger picture to be seen. And that has been captured by the type A. You see, he has used different pipes for different purposes. And he also understands there's a certain way that needs to be done. This has to be done so that this will sustain. And this simply means there are two things. A, a type B person, B person can always see something bigger, the big picture, and he can always manage situation. What is that secret ingredient that gives you the ability to see the big picture? You see, when you want to see something, to see the big picture, you should be able to relate different concepts, abstract concept, concepts that are maybe out there. You might always be, we are individual human beings, we always see something small. But it is our ability to really relate various concepts, give us the, the ultimate skill of connecting things and seeing the big picture. And it is how we navigate through, through all this chaos that we see in a society, uh, in various uh, natural events, and we simplify. And sim simplify into a level that we ultimately solve some of these problems. What is that particular skill that gives this ability? the ability of looking at things from the first principles, first principle thinking. This is science and mathematics primary. And we need to make a lot of bees in our society, two things primarily, science and mathematics thinking that, not the knowledge of course, the ability and the skill to think in terms of first principle. Let's look at flair. You see, any professional teacher must also must teach, yes. But he also should advance his field. He should come up with techniques of better, you know, to make better teaching environment. That is his flair. He has to do that. You see, having the ability of flair is simply to realize there's something bigger than yourself. This all we see in the doctrine of philosophy. And my dear friends and uh, dear colleagues and my dear teachers, a lot of teachers are here as well. This is what I propose. We need science, mathematics, and philosophy. And this is what I always try to share in our society to make a lot of bees. And this is sort of things that I always have in my, my mind, had in my mind when I created my YouTube channel some time back. So I had around 
uh, more than 250,000 subscribers right now. Uh, some recent uh, videos are shown here. So the best thing is I have reached more than 1.2 uh, million unique viewers, particularly in the age group of 20 to 40. And this, I do that particularly, you see, I mean, science is a hard to sell thing in, you know, I think not in only in Sri Lanka, but in any, any, any sort of a uh, setup. What I do is I teach hard science principles, yes. So for an example, I recently did a video on top lip updraft stove. It's a special type of efficient curve, so a stove design, okay? But if I want to you know, explain that concept to a general audience, they will never watch. So what I do is I will come up with a sort of a spin, a story, so that I teach this concept and also end it up with a call for action. So people will try, and these are the, the results are amazing. People, they do, they do their own experiment, and they make them by themselves, and they do this as projects, and they send these pictures to me. And in fact, <laughs> There were so many, I couldn't trace them. So I had only one slide to show them. And I even do sometimes various community science projects. But I, so this is one of these things. So I, I teach them how to make a sort of a, a light screen with a certain light source to attract various insects. So when you come there, when insects come there, I show them how to you know, identify them and how to categorize. And, and, and so these are some of the results. We, so we get like more than 50 participants coming and showing some of these. Uh, we even gave, uh, you know, recognize these people, even gave gifts. So, so these are some of the impacts, particularly we as sectors. This is another thing. We show them how to make a small microscope so that, I mean, a microscope that I've been, I have some experience working with microscope. You know, microscope that will have an ability of somewhere around the uh, typical microscope, commercial microscope, you purchase around 50,000 rupees without no cost. Why? Because having a microscope in students' hands is a great access to simply to catalyze their curiosity. And so this is what I have. And also I do a little bit of uh, philosophy as well because I think these three things are necessary. So this is my, in and not only me, of course there are so many other people who are doing this thing. So this is my invitation really. I mean, we as academics, I, you know, we, we have been primarily teaching to students who are into various, you know, uh, sex, uh, uh, various disciplines, very specific disciplines. But I think it's our player, little bit at least, to call ourselves and basically address the general public as well and try and disseminate some of this knowledge. Maybe not the latest research, but the way we should think according to the first principles. And this evening, that's what I have to share with you. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, it is indeed a pleasure to listen to you, Dr. Ruchira. Uh, I also, um, I think I'm one of those subscribers as well. So um, our last speaker for the day uh, is Professor Jagat Munasingha. Uh, professor Munasinghe is a professor attached to the Department of Town and Country Planning at the University of Moratua. He completed his PhD from the National University of Singapore in 2004. He is a fellow of the Institute of Architects as well as the Institute of Town Planners Sri Lanka. Uh, he served as the chairman of the Urban Development Authority in Sri Lanka from 2016 to 2019, where he was instrumental in bringing some important changes such as uh, adoption of strategic planning to expedite plan uh, preparation, uh, as well as uh, the introduction of online building application system. Um, he was also the Director General of National Physical Planning Department from the year of 2016 to 2019. Uh, he reviewed, uh, he, he was, uh, he was or rather, uh, the, the revision of the National Physical Plan in 2017 as well. Uh, let me welcome Professor Jagat Munasingham. Okay, thank you very much uh, for the kind of lengthy introduction. Right, anyway, right, uh, my intention is to take you to a very basic level. Of course, we have heard from medicine, uh, business, and the uh, innovation, and also so many other different fields, so, and also computer science as well. Of course, very advanced. 
but uh, i'll take uh, i'll try to take you to kind of very basic level where we as commonly as academics and students most, most of us here and we are trying to uh, wh what type of things that we can do in order to kind of make it uh, uh, kind of more socio economic impact how can we do research uh, so that we can make a wider impact in the society right okay uh, when we get into a kind of a topic like this it's very likely we have uh, enough people to say okay do this don't do that okay this is the way you should, should be doing and this is not the way they should should not be doing a lot of didactic stories and also kind of prescriptions and so on right but uh, i'm not a kind of an expert in that way therefore what i'm doing is okay right this is i'm sharing with you what i have learned okay what i've been taught right and what i experimented and also what i kind of trying to uh, try to do uh, sometimes of course there were there were failures and successes as well and also what i have learned at the end right so uh, this is a sh sharing of all that okay we all know that uh, in doing research how how what, what do we really do by the title i mean by the name of research right and it's a matter of construction of knowledge i believe that all of us believe that right whatever we, it may come in a form of a product it may come in a kind of website it may come in a kind of a communication mode or whatever whatever it is it's a construction of knowledge right so what is this knowledge that we are dealing with okay i have presented this elsewhere therefore if you have seen this before don't uh, take it too serious but anyway there are four different types of knowledge that we deal with mainly of course the knowledge can be divided into four different kind of types the first one is of course the known knowns that means apidanna apidanna bhav right things that we know that we know right why it's put in single also i'll tell you later right right then the second one is about there are things that we know that we do not know apidanna ti bhav apidanna right second type of things i wish they could have been in tamil as well but i had no time to kind of get it done but anyway so uh, this is the second type of knowledge the third one is of course there are things that we do not know that we know that means api danna bhavi dannine right the last one is of course of course no danna bhavi dannine right okay there are things that we do not know that we do not do not know right so these are the four main different types of uh, knowledge that we deal with but i'm sure there are there are things in between like for example danna una danna vage inna devuluthi enna kolam there are things that we know but we pretend not to know right and also there can be other ones like for example danna athu una danna vage katha kala devuluthi no right there are things that we talk about a lot but we don't know about the subject and we have had enough examples very recently right okay let's not talk about it right okay fine right so if we try to put this into a kind of a graph like this right about how much we know about the things that we know that things are there right if we try to put it into the graph okay in it like in a, in a diagram like this in a quadrant like this right the ones that we know that we know very much of course we are very comfortable with that therefore we can practice it we do practice it because we know that very well right and also there are ones that we know that we do not know therefore there's a curiosity of course that's uh, what is mentioned by uh, some of you of course this is where we try to we we try to kind of search for it right we try to see where it is actually available and how it happens and why and all that right and there are things that we know that that we do not know that we know that's pretty ignorance of course we are very very kind of uh, poor in that way therefore we have forgotten that we don't know that we really don't know that then the last one is of course blindness that means we do not know that we do not know that right so total like blindness right now where is research of course uh, i believe dr prasnalil of course try to start with say waste research right of course we search things where does it really start as i said okay when we know things that we know we are comfortable with it it's within our comfort zone therefore we practice it right we apply it and when we know that we do not know something of course there where we start to search for it of course how to make a search or research of course that's what prasnalil has mentioned right make it refine and we try to explore it then we do not know about some things that we know then we estimate and we uh, we assume of course that was mentioned by you i believe right somebody has mentioned it before right and the last one of course uh, we do not know that we do not know that therefore other people those who know that of course manipulate and of course that is how we got kind of manipulated by the others 
right? That's how it happens, right? So we have enough examples of that as well, right? So how can we do research in the university in a manner so that it will have, it can have wider social impact, social, physical, social economic impact, and maybe physical impact as well, right? So I'm mean, coming from I mean, a very different field to that of what was uh, discussed here. Maybe the kind of uh, impact that we make is not very implicit, very, very explicit, but very implicit in that way. That means implicitly we do a big impact because I'm coming from planning, uh, town planning and architecture, of course architecture. So there's a lot of impact in the built environment, but it's not maybe felt suddenly, but it, it will take some, some, some time for you to feel, of course, there was a change and there were things happen, things that can change, right? Right. Usually, uh, as we all know in the university, we deal with uh, within our comfort zone, of course, when we have some uh, things to search for. Of course, we go by this deductive inquiry. I, I, I believe all of you are familiar with these terms. Of course, we try to find a solution for something. We, are very, we try to kind of reduce it. Is there a relationship between this and that? Is it happened because of that? Is there some, something kind of relationship between this, uh, the uh, clearance of the rainforest and the uh, rains, a uh, reduction of rain or something like that? that? This is how we do it. We try to be very deductive in that way. And therefore, we try to, what we do is, of course, we, the things that we know, of, of course, uh, we make use of the maybe statistics and the modeling and things like that that we are very familiar with. We just tested before, right? So that we, we, that's within our comfort zone. And we do not want to kind of change very much, of course. Therefore, we go with that. Then what we come across is, of course, maybe the things that we already know, right? We converge the kind of things. Of course, sometimes we find, oh, we didn't know that before. Okay, now that we know it, we're comfortable with it. That's fine, right? Isn't that what most of us are doing now, right? So when we do that, of course, it gets back to the kind of normalized. Of course, sometimes they're hegemonized by some people. Of course, that is how it happens, right? Then we go back to this again when we are hurt by something and now we find that we have to do something. Of course, we get back to this. And it's going like that. I call it the Anum Chakra, that is knowledge cycle. So we are going in this cycle again and again, so that most of the time what happens, I believe the, the, the complaint that universities don't do much is that because we go in the same cycle again and again, not, not very, very kind of outward, and we make it an introvert cycle, right? But if we want to make a difference, right? Can't we do something more than that? Rather than asking questions like what, how, and where, what if, right? Inductive inquiry. So if we try to do that, don't we get kind of all the way back into this, hitting this area that is of our blindness, right? So if we ask questions like that, and also go with that, of course the cycle will be kind of more extrovert. That means we will be going outward, and we will be kind of doing things which have not been imagined before, right? And for that, of course, we need three things to be done, right? We have to ask inductive questions, of course, some alternative methods and kind of vision, we had more than kind of the product driven, of course, I believe we have to vision driven, right? Rather than going into this problem, solve the problem, something more than that. That's what I believe. And therefore, first thing that is required, I, I call it the three, three, I, three I approach, right? So see, uh, this is something that I have been telling my students as well, of course, the very first thing that we need is, okay, knowledge is important, but imagination is more important. I believe all of you believe that. So we all have knowledge, and we are comfortable with our knowledge sometimes. But if we be with that, of course, then there's no, no further. So of course, what we need is imagination, right? Parikalpane. That's very, very important, right? Second is, of course, uh, contestation is required, but not for fighting and debating and all, not only that, but of course, inductive inquiry, induction. We have to ask questions. What if? OK, we can say, this is there. OK, there's a relationship between this and that. But is that true? Is that, is that true always? Right? Can't we question that? Right? The third one is inspiration and insight. So I would call the imagination, inductive inquiry, and inspiration are the three things that is required. Right? And uh, we all know why this, uh, the, uh, the uh, Archimedes is well known for, not because what he found, but because the way that he expressed his, what he found. Right? So that is, that is real, real uh, kind of or the insight that he got. Right? Where does it come from? Of course, we don't know. Well, if you ask me, OK, now that somebody can say, you also have to be didactic, and you, you just should uh, ask some how to do things, and it's very prescriptive. But I have enough examples in the, in the slideshow here. But since my time is over, it's only 10, 10 minutes. So therefore, I'll finish it for the moment. In the second round, of course, I'll take some examples, which I did and what I, what I could kind of gather. Right? Thank you. Thank you very much. I believe I could make it.
Thank you very much, uh, Professor Munisinghe, for that very insightful uh, speech. Uh, so we move on to the second session where we will have a panel discussion with the panelists. So we will have a more in-depth discussion uh, on some of the issues that were touched on in the first uh, few speeches. So I'll let uh, the uh, uh, panels be set up over here uh, and we'll start in a minute or so.